Hi everyone. Um, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about last week's episode of uh, Agents of Shield. Um, kind of doing this at the last minute uh, because the new episode airs tomorrow. And I want to get this up tonight, um, so it's not going to be long. But again, there are going to be spoilers, just as there have been. However, before you click away because you haven't seen the episode yet. Today in America, we celebrate Columbus Day. And whether or not you celebrate Columbus Day or don't, whether you live in America or not, please check the description below for a link to a video that is Columbus Day related, which I hope that you enjoy. Please be advised, language not appropriate for small children. Thank you. And now, the Asset, third episode in this first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, the Asset is Dr. Franklin Hall. He's played by Ian Hart. And I have not seen Ian Hart in anything since he was an agent hunting down Will Smith in Enemy of the State. That was 15 years ago. I don't know where the guy has been. He's, he's changed quite a bit since then. Um, he, of course, is the uh, scientist that S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, has in protective custody. Um, and is uh, abducted in a very uh, odd sequence at the very beginning. By the way, I really like the guy who plays the truck driver, Agent Mack, in the beginning. Really love the setup for that scene. Guy on the road, basically, uh, chatting with someone on the radio, taking a drink out of a Slurpee. Just looks like a regular unshaven truck driver. Um, <laughs> but of course, we learn right away that he's an agent transporting um, a guy in the back. Um, one of my favorite lines in the episode is when the truck it has this invisible force that hoists it up and dangles it, basically, with the trailer hanging below it. He's saying, you know, they're on the radio asking him, what's the situation? And he says, oh, hell, I can't explain. <laughs> Uh, I love that line. Um, I noticed that um, when the truck lands, the uh, cab is actually on its side, but the trailer is still right side up, which makes it easier to access the guy inside. Also figured it was a lot less trouble to only turn the cab on its side rather than the uh, whole trailer when they shot the scene. So there you go. Uh, kind of an expensive um, effect, but not as expensive as the lab, which actually turns and rotates depending on which way the gravity is pulling it uh, in the climax. That was that was pretty elaborate for a TV series. Um, let's see now. Um, so we had, uh, I'm sorry, let me put my glasses on here so I can see this better. <clears throat> um, Quinn. Quinn is, of course, the guy who uh, was the old sort of college roommate, I guess, uh, of, uh, of Hall. Um, back in the day when they first were discussing this uh, new rare substance called Gravitonium. <laughs> Reminds me of Unobtainium from Avatar. Um, and uh, so he has him working on the uh, scheme right there. Of course, at the end, when Hall gets sucked into the um, gravity, uh, whatever the blobby thing is in the middle of the machine that looks like it's, you know, the spaceship launcher from Contact. Um, and Quinn takes off in his helicopter to uh, be a bad guy some other day or something like that. I figure both these guys are going to be dealing with S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, some point in the future. We've got the, uh, the makings of an ongoing story right there. Um, Paul could end up being, you know, the gravitator or something like that if he manages to get out of the uh, mucky gravity blobby thing, you know, and he becomes some sort of supervillain. Quinn probably have something to do with that as well. Or they'll just, you know, uh, be giving S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, trouble separately. I guess we'll see about that. I also wanted to mention, of course, the muscle memory thing. Um, they talk about having muscle memory and knowing how to disable someone and things like that when... Uh, um, when Ward is uh, training Sky uh, to, you know, fight uh, guys and things like that. And, of course, Coulson has some difficulty disassembling his uh, piece. Uh, his muscle memory is off. What's going on there? And um, if you've watched the first video I did on this, uh, on this series uh, with the first episode, they're talking about how uh, Coulson, after he, was, uh, after he died for however many seconds it was, in the Avengers, after he was stabbed by um, Loki, he ends up recovering and going to Tahiti to, to recuperate. Uh, but, of course, a couple of the characters in the show, played, by, of course, by Robin... Um, uh, Robin... I uh, can't remember her name. Maria Hill. You know, Agent Maria Hill. Um, Rob, uh, sorry, Colby Smulders. That's right. She plays Robin in How I Met Your Mother. Colby Smulders and um, Ron Glass from Firefly. The two of them, they know that that's not actually true. Something else happened to them. And... I immediately thought, hmm, maybe he's a clone. And because Agent Coulson has lost some muscle memory, could that be because he has different muscles? 
Could that be because he isn't actually Agent Coulson, at least not the Coulson we've seen in the Marvel movies? That he's a new Agent Coulson, in other words, like a clone of Coulson, who has the memories of Coulson? I don't know how that would work exactly, how the S.H.I.E.L.D. would be able to pull that off, but uh, it seems the most likely explanation at this point. There may be some other explanation, in fact, there probably is. Um, but uh, yeah, clearly he's not the same person. Um, they mention uh, the Avengers and events in the movie The Avengers at least three times during this, uh, during this episode. You know, they always seem to work in some reference to one of the movies uh, in every episode so far. Um, we learn that Skye grew up in foster homes. We uh, learn that uh, Ward grew up in Massachusetts with his two brothers, one of whom was a big bully, which is why he became an agent. Um, let's see. Uh, some of the other lines, oh, I really like Coulson's closet <laughs> with all the identical suits on the ship. And then, of course, when they uh, perform their two-man uh, infiltration operation, um, Ward is dressed appropriately, <laughs> but Coulson is still wearing a jacket and tie. Why is he doing that? Why is he wearing a jacket and tie when he knows that he's going to be in a combat situation? That's ridiculous. Um, even more ridiculous than that, Ward um, grabs a guy's uh, a pump pack, uh, a, a shotgun, basically one of those shotguns that you break open and pull the shells out manually and then snap shut. Only holds two uh, shells at a time, and yet some sound guy added the effect of a the sound effect of a pump gun, you know, ch -ch -ch, and that model of shotgun doesn't actually do that. You don't pump that shotgun. That that, uh, that sound effect was completely unnecessary and ridiculous. That happened in Johnny Handsome too, Walter Hill film, which I really like. Um, uh, so uh, a couple lines that I really like. Um, uh, Fitz is saying, uh, talking about how the gravitation uh, device would affect objects around it. And it says, you can imagine what would happen to a big rig at 100 kilometers per hour. Or you could just remember because we saw it already, didn't we? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and uh, one of uh, Quinn's bodyguards uh, watches Sky uh, grab the gun away from Quinn. And uh, he says, kids got balls. And Sky says, thanks, but yuck. That's a good one. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got right now. Um, still thinking that Col uh, Coulson is a clone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I didn't like this episode as much as the other two when I first saw it, but after watching it again, I like it, uh, you know, just as much as the others. It's, uh, you know, it's looking good. It's looking like a good series so far. Uh, I'm enjoying it, and I'm going to enjoy, uh, the new episode tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, I hope that you do too if you watch it, and I will have another video on that episode, of course, next week. Thanks very much. Appreciate you tuning in. See you again soon.